Welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on the ThinkTech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studios at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Joining me in the studios is former Honolulu Councilman and State Senator, Mr. Rod Tam. Today we're going to talk with Mr. Tam about financial accountability of the rail. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 12 noon to 5 p.m. every weekday and earlier shows are streamed live all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our uh, live streams or previous broadcasts which are available on YouTube.com or if you want to subscribe to our programs or get on mailing lists and get our programs advised, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at ThinkTechHi. So, again, this is about uh, monies and costs of the Honolulu Rail, and there's some people that are raising some concerns, and uh, so I've decided to bring Mr. Ra Tam in because he's with a group. Uh, actually, they've actually filed complaints. They've denounced the introduction of uh, lacking of financial accountability and scrutiny in City County Bill 3, CD1. Rod, thank right. you for hey, joining you, me. I appreciate Carol. you coming in. I appreciate in. it. Aloha. Uh, tell us, the little viewers out there, what is this about? I mean, is it just a few pennies or is this a lifetime signing on to a cost that we we don't really know the amount. What, what it is amounts it? to billions of dollars, uh, billions of dollars of taxpayers' money and uh, being financially unaccountable for. Mm -hmm. uh, if, for example, if I may, uh, projected costs, it started from uh, December 2012 with $5.26 uh, billion. December 2014 went up to $5.9 billion. October 2015 went up to $6.56 billion. March 2016 went up to $6.9 billion. And uh, projected now in May, which is this month, uh, actually last month, uh, last year, 2016, $8.1 billion. It's projected to go up to over $10 billion now. And, and it's not just that simple. These are just projections. Right. But there, are, as we've seen, things are revealing themselves. There's right. other costs that have yet to be mentioned or quantified. Right. For example, the Dillingham Boulevard, the water main, the 42-inch water main. That in itself is an ex expensive undertaking. Has that been factored into this, into this price no, of the it increase? No, has not been factored. In fact, not only the water line. Uh, it's also the utility lines mm -hmm. with the telephone, Hawaii Electric, the cables. Uh, imagine they got to remove each of the utility uh, pole. And I remember back when I was a state senator, and there was one project, Power Young School, wanted to have a new entrance. The utility pole was right in the way. To remove that utility pole, and to place it into another location, because you had telephone lines, cable, electric uh, mm -hmm. lines, it costs over a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> that that was based in terms of uh, about 1995. Now, you have this organization that have come together, and obviously out of frustration and, and the lack of clarity and transparency on the part of the city and heart and, and the mayor especially. Right. So you found that uh, financial accountability for Rail Mass Transit Association. Can you share with us a little bit about that and where are you going with this and what are you eventually, what's the outcome other than you denounced Bill 3 right. and then there's also Bill 42. So give us a little background in, about this association. Okay, and yeah, let me begin by saying that I got invited to some meetings by opponents to uh, rail mm -hmm. and because of the cost factor financial accountability so I went to the meetings and they were talking at a round table about waste and I said to myself they're not very organized so they uh, continuously they called me and I said you know what let me try to establish some foundation for you guys and first of all we need a name we're all individuals 
And, and they said, why do you want to get involved? I said, well, at a time when I was a city councilman is when it got approved legislatively for a fixed guideway system, which is another term for a rail. Mm -hmm. It didn't specifically say it was steel at all. <laughs> okay, is this mayor, Mayor Kurt Codwell, that wants to build in steel, and steel is very expensive right, compared to other type of technologies. So what happened, I organized this organization, and we called it Financial Accountability for Rail Transit Association. And I said, they asked me, what is a financial accountability? So I went over the terminology and said, you know what you guys are talking about is cost. In a legal terms or financial terms, it's called financial accountability. It's like you having your, find your taxes, you gotta be financially accountable. Right. right. So it's very simply put. And so we started using the term, and I said, everybody should try to hang on to that term and use it. And I said, why? Because we're all talking about cost, but you gotta use the right terminology. Mm -hmm. So they started using the right terminology, and then everybody's coming along now. There's more clarity to it. Uh, what we've done, we oppose in terms of some legislation in the city council. Uh, Bill 3, specifically. Bill 3 took the existing law of the, of the city, which uh, at the time, Chairman uh, Councilman uh, Ernie Martin established, whereby there would be oversight of the rail, the cost financially, and so forth. And, uh, Lo and behold, reorganization occurred. Ernie Martin was out as chair, and so was the other uh, three council members, and Pobiyashi, Carol Folk, and Naga, and there was another person. But what happened is, the Kirk Caldwell started having puppets <laughs> within the council. Mm -hmm. He organized them, and he wanted his way. You know, like king ruler, right, basically. So what he did is that he wanted this Bill 3, which took away the financial accountability from the city council. Well, hold, hold on now. We already have a, an idea how yeah. dysfunctional the rail and the building of it right. and the financing and a lot of things and lack of transparency. Uh -huh. You're saying that Caldwell introduced or through the city council right formulated a bill, put together a bill, structured one, to rid himself of accountability to the public? Right. Am I... Right. You're right. Because uh, what how, happened how do is you wake up in the was to ask for accountability by the council. But that should be uh, welcome accountability because it helps you gauge what you need and you have to go to the federal agencies to justify the need and you must show that you have the ability, but if you don't have accountability, then how can the feds trust what you say? Well, this way you have the double talk, basically. It was left up to the mayor who said, well, I want to be the sole person to give a presentation to the, to the fed, not the city council. And there wouldn't be any public hearings either. I see. So we don't have the city council to make the presentation. Right. And no oversight we, by the city we council. We get someone that they have picked and right. shaped and right. chiseled out. Right. So what does this mean in the, in the long run to the taxpayer here, the, the people that have retired, for example, mm -hmm. on a very fixed income? Yeah. Because in, what, 2005, we're looking at a whole different economy compared to 2016 and 2017. Right. Things have really changed. Right. How can the taxpayer and, and how one, can one justify such an impact, such as the mayor, on, on the homeowners and the taxpayers? How can you just how you simply can you put? If the taxpayers are not knowledgeable, they're lost. So you run right over there, basically. <laughs> so and then all the cost of living in, it goes up and up. We are the the second highest cost of living in the United States, um, next to Maryland. So, so yeah, you're right. We have a lot of senior citizens. So you, you there's no a very little transparency. Right. There, we know the cost is just astronomical now. Right. No controls, no, uh, no one's adhering to the promise. And yet we're seeing an increase and in the economy is changing. Mm -hmm. And then you decide that you introduce a bill removing oversight or any right. public scrutiny. Right. It's a called what you, a functional government, a dysfunctional government of a dictatorship, <laughs> quite frankly. 
Yeah, but in the process, this process, there are a number of people to get hurt. Uh, uh, as far as not just, I'm a homeowner myself, and I can imagine the cost. And then what other costs will this mayor, I'm, I'm noticing many of things that are not being cared for, like uh, cleaning of streams, which will eventually lend itself to backing up and causing floods and damaging property. Right. And there in Waipahu just yesterday, I witnessed uh, 18, 19 shopping carts laying at the bank of the stream and it's overgrown and all of that represents uh, danger in high rains. Well, there's uh, potholes these also. Potholes. Potholes, like, for example, I live in a urban part of downtown, okay, in, mm -hmm. in Powell Valley. And so I take my family to, to and from around to work and so forth. And I have to use one road all the time, maybe three, four times a day. And it's called uh, uh, Punchbowl, okay, Street. Mm -hmm. And that's right adjacent to City Hall. There's potholes there, right in the backyard of the mayor. <laughs> and, and he won't repair it. Imagine, he has to go through that place and, and he doesn't do anything. Like if we had Mayor Fossey again, the next day it would be covered. Yeah, yeah. well, there's something to be said about this, and, and you, when you denounce, your organization denounced Bill 3, right. CD1, the, the removal of city council is one of the points they raised. Uh, in the present law, in overseeing the administration's re revenue and cost financial analysis and future budget projects uh, for the mass transportation of city rail, thus resulting in the city council not being financially accountable. Two, eliminating the city council and conducting public hearings. So right. you're saying that with all of this, your objection is that this is a reality, is that they don't have to have a hearing. They don't have to have a hearing at all. So how would we as taxpayers and our representative get to, because the state legislators wouldn't be privy to this information either, right? Right, in fact, the state legislators were frustrated. They couldn't get bill, Senate bill, uh, 1183 passed because they didn't get accurate information from the from the mayor. So it wasn't just people disagreeing or not not wanting to give in a cave in. They just wouldn't know what they were caving into. Right. You know, my other occupation previously was a budget analyst in the state government and also in the private sector. How can I put together a budget for expenditures if I don't give if not given any accurate figures? And this is the case in terms of the House Representative and the State Senate. They didn't get accurate figures. In fact, the mayor gave the conflicting figures. And then uh, how does one gauge hmm. how the money is being spent? That, that seems to be, would be another loss through this bill oh. if, if we wouldn't be able to ask any questions? Yeah, we will be. Able to. And if this information wouldn't be available right. to us. It's a defiance of democracy, if you think about it. So, what what is your your opinion of the state senate and this? You think the governor has cause, or someone will show cause to have a special session to address this? Or what, what's your thought on that or insight? Well, look at it politically. If the governor was to call for a special session, he would be in trouble because the house and the senate cannot agree, and then. He would have to prove that he be the knight in armor. But how can he when he don't have concrete uh, accountability, financial accountability from the mayor? You know, mm -hmm. and then he's going to get blamed for it. And you know, it costs us thousands of dollars for a special session. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep hold of that thought yeah, because right. uh, there's other questions about that. Sure. I want to know, and, and would it be foolhardy of the governor to have a special session if he intends to run for governor? Because is it possible that Kirk might want to run for governor? Yes. Let me share with you. We, we have, okay. we're going to take a break okay. here, but, uh, uh, okay, we're taking a short break, and I'm Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with Mr. Rod Tam about lacking of financial accountability and scrutiny in the City Council Bill 3, CD1, on funding of the Honolulu Rapid Rail Transit Project. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. 
We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here. And my past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen. We're back. We're live. I'm Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii on the ThinkTech live streaming network series, talking about uh, the financial lack of accountability and scrutiny in City Council Bill 3, CD1, on funding for the rail uh, tra rapid transit project. So uh, my guest again is Mr. Rod Tam, and former city councilman and state senator. We left off at before the break. Talking about uh, the governor's this is this debate that he will call a special session. Is that likely? I don't think so. If he be wise, act, uh, politically, he would not do so uh, because he doesn't have the background information either, mm -hmm. and he's going to be accused that he, if he doesn't succeed in terms of coming up with a, uh, finances for the rail, right? to the association of the state legislature, then he's going to be look foolish. Mm -hmm. Now, I know these are separate bodies. The CD1 of the Bill 3 wouldn't apply. The governor wouldn't have much to say over the, the accountability, right. uh, public hearings at the city council level. But knowing all of this, do you think this should be a factor that he consider uh, that Bill 3 and 42 might be introduced and passed? And then, therefore, he agrees with the legislators to grant the money or give, pass it. Is that going to leave the uh, public? Well, let me put it this way. We all know that the mayor, Kirk Codwell, is trying to leverage the legislature and the governor. By calling a bluff in terms of, I'm going to increase public taxes, commercially and also residentially. Okay. And we should not fall to that bluff, basically. He has to be accountable. And we should demand to have public hearings on a Saturday mm -hmm. so that we can call it to the table. And because we all know that we homeowners cannot afford increasing public taxes when over 60% of homeowners on the island of Oahu are senior citizens. Mm -hmm. You know what happened to them? Increasing taxes is to pay for the rail in addition, is that a lot of them will have to sell their homes. Then you're going to have more of a homeless problem on Where the are they going to go? Yeah, where are they going to go? And there are seniors and right. readjusting and traveling abroad right. to, to some other state. Right. That seems to be a big problem. And in fact, you know what happened in, in the communities that I reside in, and, and this is the urban area or even outside of the urban area, there are the children who are adult children and the grandchildren moving back with their parents. Now, if they can't afford the property tax, they all have to sell the homes or vacant. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to mm -hmm. go? It become more of a financial burden on the state and the city. And, and I was talking to someone, and they said, so if they were to raise the taxes because of their retirement, their situation, uh, they would have to take out equity, right. a reverse mortgage or whatever you call it, some financial arrangement if they desire to stay here. But they're saying, well, what if I live beyond that? Now I'm homeless. Yeah. And in fact, you know who would be the game? The financial institutions. And where does Kirk Codwell work for? Territorial savings. Territorial savings. <laughs> right. So they're going to gain. So on the, in the backdrop, you'll see a number of pictures we've put together uh, on the rail that I've taken over the years of this development. And you see it increasingly uh, growing in parts. Now, for example, out at uh, Banana Patch, okay. there's a humongous mound of soil there that there's a big debate because of the contaminants in it, who's responsible. Mm -hmm. They haven't addressed that. So how can this mayor, and many other concerns of environmental, let's say just to get from 
uh, the area at the stadium down through Dillingham and all, there's many a pitfalls and there's lead at the community college grounds, which may go that direction, may be impacted. There's contaminants at 925 uh, Dillingham, the, the satellite city hall. We know all of these things. And in, in, in the Evil A, there's the gas pro site, millions of pounds of uh, tar like substance on the ground that was pumped in. Right. How are we going to put a price tag on that? Because it's an unknown. Well, here's the complex thing about it. I remember when I was a state senator and uh, I was chairman for the Environmental Protection Committee. I'll give you an example. At the intersection, there were two gasoline stations, one across the other. Mm -hmm. Both were vacant. They had to recondition the soil. Right, in order to put another building or do something on top of it. Because of the UST, the underground storage right. tank leaked. Right. And mm -hmm. so what happened, lo and behold, the two sites had different procedures in terms of how to uh, clean the site. <laughs> so it's nothing concrete. Let me, let me ask you something, and, and I don't expect you to have all the details, but just your opinion. Do you believe that any or much of or what degree of projects have been unaddressed because the mayor needs to show that he has some money to the feds. Do you believe that any of our daily activities, our infrastructure problems and our streets and all have been held off to work on them so that they could show that they have money in hand? Or yes. has this money been diverted? I know that money has been transferred. I have been a budget analyst. It depends on how loose the budget is. And are structured, the American move money around. Like for example, you have a pot of money budget for roads. He'll move some of that money for repair maintenance to where the roads were damaged with the rail, mm -hmm. for example, right? And they had to dig up in terms of the rail area, so he'll move that money that was needed in other areas and he put it there. Now let's go back to this KG City Council. Right. We saw now a shakeup, and, and there's a few players in there that causes me concern because it seems that they're not acting independently no, not. to represent me as, a, for example, as a, my senator, my uh, city councilman, Ron Menor. Very disappointed in his actions because it seems that whatever the mayor wishes for, Ron Menor is there to accommodate him. Is it my perception or is it a reality, that, a reality. That, that he has this change of powers in the city council? Did Was it part related to this rail, do you believe? Yes. It was structured by the mayor, Kirk Cardwell, because he knew he had problems with the leadership of Ernie Martin, and particularly with the rail. They questioned everything in the budget. So he wanted to restructure it. Now you got in terms of Ron Minora's chair, right? And then you got Ikaika Anderson in the Windward side. You got uh, Brendan Elefante. Mm -hmm. You also have Joey Man Manahan. And Joey, by the way, is the chairman for the budget committee. He's the one that's opening the doors for the mayor to have bills of legislation. Well, why now you, you've, you've overlooked one. There's Kimberly yes. Pine. Yes, I'm sorry. Kimberly team Pine player, is that the team captain? The, I, I call her the rah-rah for Mayor Caldwell. Right. And, and so when we look at, at all of this, how can their conscience serve them? Or how can they sleep with themselves at nighttime when we see, just an example, the zoo? No accreditation. Right. Uh, the animals are being treated improperly, housed improperly. We spend millions on fixing a rhino right. pond, a holding area, and it's not working. And it's, they can't. How do they live with themselves? Well, basically, they don't have sound basis of public being a public servant. That's what I would call. Them. Um, when I was in a legislature for twenty eight years. Mm -hmm. I always I had to remind myself, I'm a public servant. I must do justice for my constituents and the state of Hawaii. Yeah. And my basis of that foundation was the Constitution of the United States. You know, I was a history buff from mm -hmm. elementary school to intimate school and also to high school and public schools. And I studied the forms of government. Mm -hmm. And 
being called brainwashed, I believe this is supposed to be a people's government, not a dictatorship. So, in a nutshell, what does this mean for all of us? Should we be worried, or do, is a storm blown over? We should be worried. We should uh, demand public hearings on a Saturday morning. You know, let's get to that yeah. real quick. Okay. The normal meetings now, where public participation mm -hmm. can be observed or had, is held on a weekday. Weekday in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> right. So it uh, taxes and we have to go to work so we can't uh, we attend can't the, the right. hearings or the meeting. But you could write in a, a testimony. But it's not the same, mm -hmm. basically. How are you going to make it known that you mean business mm -hmm. when you just send out a written testimony? Basically, and what they do is they flip your written testimony and they put it aside. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Because when you have your president at a public hearing, you can have eye contact with the council member, mm -hmm. right? And that means a lot, the body language. How does one contact your organization, the, okay. the association? You call me, Rod Tan. Okay. My cell number is 808 216 5454. Okay. And you can call me from uh, 7 o'clock in the morning all the way to 10 o'clock at night. Real quickly, Bill mm -hmm. 42, yeah. uh, the mayor, you wrote uh, the FTA, the Federal Tr Transportation Authority. Right. And you could quickly, can you tell us what you were raising in there? You raised nine points. Right. And that, give us a, an idea of okay. what it was. This is uh, asking for an audit to the federal government, right? Uh, we're going to be sending it out this week. And there's no financial accountability right now. And the state and the city has not done an audit mm -hmm. on the rail itself. And there's a lot of questions to be answered. Okay, the public wants disclosure on the cost details in the present future, right. cost mm -hmm. details of the construction costs, administration costs, and maintenance costs. Right. So I really believe that this is a good start and uh, people can contact you. Oh yes, please do. Okay. I look forward to it. And I'm working with others. We welcome you to join us also, too. Yeah. Rod Tam, thank pleasure. you for joining me. I well, appreciate thank it. You. For thank Eyes you. on Hawaii. Thank but um, what I will tell you, folks, is that there's a lot of things that we need to flesh out here and be public. We should not be looking at Bill 3 and approving it. The city council should not. So if you're inclined to, contact your city councilman and give them your thoughts and share their thoughts. So that's what I would say. Okay, uh, we're out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Carol Cox. This is Eyes on Hawaii on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Mr. Rod Tam about lacking financial accountability and scrutiny in the City Council Bill 3 CD1 on funding for the Honolulu Rapid Transit Rail Project. Thank you, Mr. Tam. Thank you. And, Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Appreciate it. Look forward right. to seeing you again. Thanks right. to our broadcast engineer, Ray Sangalang our floor manager, Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. And thanks to you, our viewers and listeners. If you want to get on our email and social media program advisors, click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest or underwriter, volunteer, or if you want to join us in our downtown studio, Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktech. Hawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams, our previous broadcasts, or our Ustream TV, or YouTube.com, just go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. Go there to our web Facebook page and tell them you like us. We'd love you to like us, and of course, I'll see you next Tuesday at 12 noon for more on the eyes of Hawaii. On ThinkTech, I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.